Up next, we have a look at Exchange, a light strategy game soon to be published by Bicycle Games, the company best known for playing cards. All right, I should have edited that because actually the game came out yesterday. Not soon to be published. It was published yesterday. We're like one day late. My bad. I, that's my fault in the notes because I looked it up and ran, ran it in the wrong time. So anyway, so this game's got some interesting backstory. At least I thought it was interesting. And I had no clue um, after playing the game and trying it a few times until I sat down to write about it and talk about it tonight and publish the review that's already live on the blog that this actually is not a new game. It's an old game. This was published through Kickstarter under the name Exchange, a stock trading game of strategy and wit. Long enough game? Well, at least there's nothing else named that. That was in 2018. Now, at that time, it was self-published by the designer Eric Sillies. And yes, as far as I can tell, his name is Sillies. Now, I don't know what happened next, but backers did get their game. Based on going on Board Game Geek, I can see reviews. Like, people are like, got it, got it, it looks like my game. I'm pretty happy with it, but somewhere in the last two years, between 2018 and now, Bicycle, the playing card company, somehow got the rights to this game. And I don't know if they bought it, they they published it with Eric's help, I, I don't know. I don't know that part of the story, but they just published an updated version of that that should have hit your store sales yesterday. I noticed it is, it's on the online game stores. Now, Board Game Geek has them both under the same entry, so you can actually see the original and the new ones based on pictures people have uploaded. And I did go look at the Kickstarter and it looks like the main change they did was updated the look. It looks like the gameplay itself is, is mostly unchanged it, as far as I can tell and without having actually seen a Kickstarter copy, which, which isn't totally surprising. They would be looking to buy a solid game, but have the sort, they have the sort of corporate weight to put a better production quality uh, out mm -hmm. than, than most even successful Kickstarters are able to do because of the manufacturing capabilities that Bicycle has at their fingertips. Fair enough. Now, Bicycle did contact me. They asked if I wanted to check this game out. Um, they, it was at the same time they offered me a copy of the Alpha, which I talked about a couple weeks back. So I did receive a review copy of this, and no other compensation was provided. Now, if you want to see what you get in this updated copy of Exchange, be sure to check, check out our unboxing video on YouTube We'll be sure to drop a link to that in the show notes. Now, as usual, I'm not going to get into all the components here, uh, but I do want to call it one component in specific, and that is the player boards. Every player gets their own ledger board that you use to track how many shares you own in each of the three commodities in the game. And these are fantastically made. They're like double thick, like they're almost three thickness cardboard like uh, you don't have to see these things like check out the unboxing video for this but it is a like double thick cardboard with plastic sliders that are in there that you didn't have to put in they came assembled like they, there's nothing to snap in here that you use to slide and track your your level on everything like this is fantastic looking like this is a step above you know having notches on a two-layer player board to hold your bits this is like a full built cardboard slider system it's really impressive i i'm really impressed by this I, it very cool component for this game and again while we do love our indian small print runs and kickstarter stuff bicycle and or their parent company owns their manufacturing process all of it the whole kit and caboodle which keeps their costs lower and allows for this kind of quality bump without too much of a cost jump to the end consumer yeah, this is not an expensive game. Uh, retail is $30 US. So now as for the game, the mechanics, Exchange is one of the most pure stock market games I've ever seen. This is basically the same thing. I'd say Chinatown is the most pure trading game. This is the most pure stock market exchange game I've ever seen. Now, the backstory is you're a trader in the early days of Wall Street back in 1792, just after the signing of the Buttonwood Agreement. And to be honest, I don't know what that means either. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I know it has to do with founding the stock exchange. To start the game, you get a hand of founder cards. These are all based on actual historic figures. And you're going to pick one of those to play. That broker determines your starting portfolio and starting cash. So how much you have of the three commodities and how much cash you have on hand. Are these historical financial figures or more generic historical people? No, these are historic people. These are actual people who were involved in the founding of Wall Street. 
So by name, it tells you their job and their name. And then I have no idea if their portfolio is based on anything historical. Probably not. That part's probably made up. But they are all actual people. Um, the first game I played was uh, a rich Spanish nobleman, whereas um, one of my daughters played the master of the port. And I think Deanna just played a broker. So they And they have actual names, and they are real people. Now, exchange breaks your the entire market down into only three commodities. Uh, you have bonds, banks, and insurance. Each is represented by a color, orange, green, and blue. Players are going to track their portfolio on that ledger board that I already talked about, the really shiny thing. Um, and then the price of each stock is on a main playing board. And the main playing board just has a bunch of columns going from 10 to 90. There's these small D4-like markers that are placed on it. They're little pyramids that literally look like D4s without numbers on them to show the value of each stock. They all start at 50 bucks. Now, the game is played over five rounds, broken into a number of phases. In phase one, everyone decides secretly which commodity they want to interact with, whether it's bonds, banks, or insurance. They do this by taking one of three cards and sliding it into this cool card holder. Then the card holder is designed so all you see is the top of the card. And then you put that face down, you wait till everyone else has has each picked their own commodity card, and then you flip it up. And then everyone can see what everyone else selected. So a bit of a social aspect here, trying to work out what your opponents think might be planning on doing, but not quite a prisoner's dilemma like there was in Alpha. No, definitely not. No, this is, a, especially this first one, right? Like, there's, there's definitely, a, huh, what are they going to go for? I'm going to look at their board and I'd be like, wow, they don't have any of this, so maybe they're going to buy some of it or they have a lot. This phase one, there's not a lot to go off of, but once you get to phase two, everyone decides what they're doing with that commodity they picked. And your options are really simple, buy or sell stock. And then the amount you buy or sell from one to nine. Now, again, you're going to pick a card and put it into a sleeve. And again, these sleeves are neat, so only parts show. So what it is, is if you put the card in one way, it'll say buy at the top. And if you put it in the other way, it says sell at the top. And the nice part is the sleeve is going to hide the value. So all it's going to show is if you're buying or selling, whereas you're going to know if you're buying or selling one through nine. So again, everyone picks one, put it face down. Once everyone's done, flip it over. No, you're not actually buying and selling yet. That comes later. Well, even more social deduction, but yeah. now you see where everyone is acting, but uh -huh. are working out how they will act in what, you know, to what degree. Yep. That's exactly it. So here's where, like, that first phase, you're probably kind of guessing. This second phase, now you're looking. You're like, look, Big G's only got two banks, and they only cost 30 bucks. She's obviously going to be buying. Then I look over at Deanna and I'm like, huh, she's got like five of each commodity. I have no clue if she's going to buy or sell, right? Like, and your determination of what you're going to do. But that market's going to change, which leads to phase three. This is where we manipulate the market. Every player is going to pick a commodity card. Again, there's the three different commodities. You have one card for each and it's either plus one or minus one on each. So you're going to have the price go up one on the, on the scale or go down one on the scale. Same deal, put it in a sleeve. Everyone picks it, you put it face down, you flip it up and see what happens. So, more, more of the same, but I assume these rounds can be pretty quick once everyone's used to the game and playing and, and you're not actually hemming and hawing too much, or is there a real strong potential for uh, deep thought and really drawing these out if someone gets some uh, trouble? We definitely haven't seen any of that um my oldest daughter is famous for taking a long time to decide what to do in every game as we'll talk about later when we get to quad heroes <laughs> um she does like to take her time and hem and haw but even that this is a lightning quick game uh 45 minutes is what's listed on board game geek i think we were finishing quicker than that most times it's a lightning fast game and that's it these are the three decisions you basically make because after you've now made phase one, what commodity, what you're doing with the commodity, and how you're going to influence the market, we then do the market manipulation. So the first thing that happens is a random element. You're going to flip a market event card. There's a good stack of these, like a good number. Um, again, these are supposedly based on some historic events that affected the market. Now, it doesn't say specifically like the plague of whatever year. It'll say stuff like plague affects this or drought in the prairies causes this or whatever. But they, they are based on actual things that have influenced the market over time. And then that'll cause one or more commodities to change value, either up or down. 
Then the market's further adjusted by the influence cards everyone played. Now, there's one additional twist. In this game, and I think this is an uh, attempt at realism, the person who has the most money controls the lobby. They get a special lobbyist card that allows them to play a second influence card and influence the market twice. And they actually plan that back in phase three, the same time they're doing theirs. So whoever has the most money actually gets a little, gets to play with the market a little more. Interesting. I wonder if there's a random event for President Tweets. Um, mm. No, no, so, this is 1790, whatever. So this the is the modern real... version of exchange. <laughs> so this is the real meat of the of the game and the action where the ran and also where randomness comes into play, uh, as well as having that additional effect by the richest person. Yes. Uh, you know, this is this is where it really plays out. Yeah, I agree because it's only now after the market's been manipulated that you actually do the actions that you picked earlier. This is when you actually buy and sell. So you may like this this can be interesting right depending on what happened to the market like when you went to sell and you put plus one price you didn't know the other four players all put minuses and all of a sudden you're selling for less than you bought for and so on so you were going to play through five rounds and again that's it there's three phases then a resolution really for the rest of the phase you do that five times, then you get one final thing where the bell dings and the market's closing. What you can do in that last round is everyone just plays phase three, so you can influence the market once. And you don't get to use the rich person doesn't get the bonus. So you get that one last chance to change the price, and then you just sum up your portfolio. You look at your money and how much all your stocks are worth, and whoever has the most valuable portfolio wins. Simple and kind of to be expected winning conditions for a yep. stock exchange game. Now, there is one other very important part of the game, and that is the effect of market bubbles and bubbles bursting. So the board I mentioned earlier goes from 10 to 90. But if any time during the market manipulation, a market piece, one of those D4s, goes off the edge of the board, it actually wraps around to the other end, which greatly changes the price, right? So something you think is at 90 suddenly gets pushed up one too many, the bubble bursts, and all of a sudden it's only worth 10 bucks a share. Now, this is what this is meant to represent thematically is market bubbles bursting and a huge part of the strategy of the game is trying to either have those bubbles happen or avoid them because having a market burst just before you sell like when you're on 90 and someone pushes that over you could be really hurt and then the other way is you may go try to buy cheap and all of a sudden a bubble happens the other way when you didn't expect it and you end up paying a fortune for stocks you may not have actually wanted and you're stuck in at this point because you have to buy or sell what you put that card in. And if you can't buy, you then have to start liquidating your assets and all you get is half the value of what's currently on the board. And interestingly enough, though I hear it's extremely rare, you can be eliminated for the game if you can't buy everything you said you were going to buy even after liquidating all your assets. Now, can you can you push it down? So if you buy it at 10 and then push it down, another, it goes up, it to, goes 90. up to 90. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep, it wraps right. both, it ways. Go both ways. And that is a big strategy of the game is trying to do it. And a big part of it is watching what the other players are doing, right? If it's at 10, are you going to try to buy at 10? Or maybe you're going to sell and try to drop the market. And if you're going to do that, maybe I push it up, right? Like that's that whole social deduction aspect. Right. Well, again, we've got simple concepts with minimal action sets and resources to work, but a surprisingly complex game, as we know the stock market is. Yes. Um, not quite simulationist, but uh, pretty, pretty, pretty sort of uh, you know a broad a broad overview simulation of right. the market. Yeah, like an over like a, a zoomed out stock market with only three commodities. Right. I gotta say, so far I dig what Exchange is doing. Like it's super straightforward, right? It is a market game. It's the kind of thing I honestly think this seems like it would be a great market system to be in a bigger game. Like, this could have been the market in Clans of Caledonia, and whenever you go to buy bread, you have to, like, instead of using your trader to do it, you have your little cards, and you sit there, and you have a market phase instead of having to use a, a worker placement spot, right? Uh, uh, Clans of Caledonia is probably not the best example, but it's the most recent economic game I played besides this. But some other, like this, I actually would have preferred this system to, say, the one in Planet Steam, because that one's overly complicated with different market influences. It is just a really drilled down bare bones stock market game which is really neat and and it's it's great because of how quick and straightforward it is the other thing i like too is this is just approachable right like there aren't many people out there that don't know the basic stock trading right 
pay low, you sell high, right? That's that's the general premise. People get monetary transactions, right? Like everyone handles money every day. Yes, most of it's digital nowadays, but you get you buying and selling things, which makes this a great game for people who may not otherwise play a hobby board game. Like this is the kind of game, and again, this fits bicycles market in my mind, because this seems like the kind of game that'd be popular people who like poker or like, especially betting games, games with money, right? Because there's that push your luck element. There's that I'm gonna try to buy it too, but you might burst the bubble, and oh, you burst my bubble. It's I think people would enjoy it, and I can also see this being popular with anyone who enjoys playing market games, right? Comic games. Absolutely. Uh, luckily, there happens to be a large portion of hobby gamers who happen to love economic strategy games. So if this hits the sweet spot on difficulty versus reward, enough to capture the intro, introductory gamers and established gamers, this could be a real hit game. Yeah, I, I have to admit it. When I got the off in the exchange... I was excited to review the Alpha. It looked cool. It, alpha looked neat. It's got wooden meeple, and I thought my kids would really dig it. And this one, I put on the back burner. You'll note, it took a couple weeks to get to this review compared to the other one. And this is way better than I thought it would be. Like, it's not groundbreaking. It's not amazing. It's not the best economic game I've ever played. But it is such a distilled down, solid, simple, quick game. And there's just something to be said about games that take a basic mechanic. A basic mechanic of market speculation, market manipulation, and buying and selling, and just using them to do that in a straightforward way. Like that's all there is to the game, and then you throw in the one random element where things change that isn't influenced by the players. And you could play this, if you prefer to play with pure open information, remove that random element, and then it's only the players who are affecting the market, which would be a very interesting way to play it. Now, I will admit it does need three players, which makes sense because... I, any market manipulation game with two players becomes haves and haves nots, right? Because market manipulation, again, is, is almost a, way, a form of area control, right? You're trying to collect all the stocks. You're trying to get more than your opponents. So there is that aspect of that, and that never works great with two. Now, this does play up to six, and I got to say, with six people, that market's all over the place. So there is a loss of control when you play with more players. Because six people moving the three things, almost everything's going to move. Whereas when you play with three people, there's a good chance one of the commodities is probably going to stay exactly where it is. And two people are probably going to fight over another, and then someone's probably going to do a third. Or all three players are just going to gang up on one spot. Where once you're playing with six people, that those markers are going to go everywhere. And I think the game feels less tight that way. That makes sense. All right, well, for more in-depth look at the exchange, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews.